Hello and welcome to homegrown veg. The potato you're looking at is a store-bought potato and it's a variety called Charlotte and it's one that has rolled off the veg rack and been hiding for at least two months, perhaps even three months and I've just found it today. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to plant this Charlotte, I'm going to plant this potato. Let me bring it up a wee bit closer, let you get a closer look. Have you got any like that at the moment? With a shoot, and maybe some roots. If you have, you might want to consider planting them. Because you certainly ain't going to eat them, are you? Let me show you uh, what a Charlotte potato, shop bought potato, would look like planted in a 10 inch water bucket and growing on for between two and three months. Let me show you this. How's that? That's a shop bought potato growing in a 10 inch water bucket. It's been in there for between two to three months. That's what it used to look like, something like that. Although I hadn't let it go on as far as that, obviously. Um, as I've just said, this one, I've just found it. Uh, it should have been in probably two to three months ago when this one went in. Uh, but it missed the boat, but we're going to put it in today. Um, but what I want to do, I want to show you how I grow these potatoes in 10 inch water buckets and I want to show you a reveal I want to show you what's possible now how am I going to do that? well I've got some footage from about three years ago of a potato reveal it was a two pot shootout it was Charlotte a shop bought potato and Nicola another shop bought potato You've got to watch this footage. You've got to watch this footage. I mean, it's good. I'm looking back on it now. I mean, one of the things that's good about it is uh, my dog Molly's on there. Molly's not with us anymore. Uh, so it's nice for me to look back at it. But hey, check out the reveal. Check out the result. Uh, and before you do that, have a guesstimate. One potato in, how many out? Have a guesstimate. One potato in, how many out? A small 10 inch water bucket. What weight? Go for a weight in poundage. Would you be happy if you put one in and got a pound back? Would you be happy if you put one in and got two pound back? Would you like to get two potatoes back, four potatoes back, six, eight, ten? Just as a guess. As a guess. Now watch this video, then come back to me and I'll show you the secret of growing shop bought potatoes in 10 inch water buckets. Don't forget, come back to me. Hello. This is a potato called Charlotte. This is my dog called Molly. Hi Molly. I'm going to have a look at Charlotte today. Charlotte's been in this pot just over four months. One seed potato in a 10 inch pot. We'll just take the tops off first, get rid of those, and then we'll drop this pot. See what Charlotte's got. Wow, that looks quite wet Molly. It does, looks really wet. Okay. Let's have a look, see what we've got. Oh, I see a Charlotte round the side there, that's looking good. Wow. You okay if we got a few of that size Molly, wouldn't we? Ah, that's not for you, that's not for you. Hold on, oh, it's soaking wet this pot. Really is. Ooh. 
Well, I'm glad we left those no longer because, to be honest, because this pot's so wet, I'm not too sure they would have lasted much longer. Wow, falling all over the place. I'll tell you what, we'll pop them in here first and then um, we'll empty them out in the bar and see what we've got. And then I think because we've got one or two of these guys, I think it's worth a weighing, don't you? As a seed potato look. Rotten. Okay, that's as many as we're going to get. Let's have a look at them and we'll go and get the scales do away. How's that? One side potato is a 10 inch pot. It's a good return, isn't it? One in, two, four, six, eight. 10 decent sized potatoes out, one in. That's a good return, Molly, isn't it? It is. Um, should we take these indoors and weigh them? Yeah, I think we want to take them indoors because what happens when we uh, weigh potatoes outdoors quite often when the sun's shining, and it is today, uh, it reflects in the uh, bezel of the scales and you can't actually see what the scales are reading. So we'll take these guys indoors, more, and we'll do a weighing indoors. Okay. Now, I usually give Molly small potatoes. That looks just a, a, a shade too big for my liking. Oh, that's a better one. Yeah, that's okay. I was going to say I'll go. In, I'll have a look and find a potato from a, a small potato from a previous review and give Molly that. I don't want to give her. Uh, potatoes that perhaps a bit big might make it ill, hopefully not. Uh, but I found a much smaller one, um, so we'll wash these, uh, weigh them, and then we'll give one to Molly. Come on, Molly, we're going indoors. Come on, come on, sweet dad. Come on. Just over one and a half pound from that pot. 
So we're happy with that. This is a potato called Nicola. Nicola is a main crop potato. She's been in this pot now for four months. I'm sure you can see these leaves are starting to go yellow. Um, so it's about time we had Nicola out of this pot. There's another couple of reasons that make me want to uh, take this pot of potatoes today. Uh, the pot's becoming deformed now uh, by the potatoes pressing on the sides internally. Uh, so I'm expecting there's going to be a few potatoes on this plant. Um, and secondly, um, we need some potatoes indoors. So we've got to take them. Um, and leaving this potato in this pot any longer will be a false economy. I don't think the potatoes will get any bigger. The leaves are going yellow. We've had a tremendous amount of rain lately. And every pot I'm uh, emptying out tends to be waterlogged. Um, so what we don't want, we don't want to leave the potatoes in here so that they go rotten, get the chance to go rotten, we may as well have them out now. So that's what we're going to do. I've got my assistant Molly with me. Excuse me Molly. You've probably seen Molly dodging about. Look, there's loads of top growth on this. Um, but it's seen better days so let's get rid of it. So this is Nicola. Let's see what we've got in there, Mom. We know we've got some because we can actually feel them pushing against the sides of the pot. So we know there's some in there. So we don't have any. Well, hey, we don't want to come out. Oh, that's a good sign. The wedged in the pot. Whoa! Holy schmoly! You can't see what I can see. I'm going to try and turn this round. Hopefully it won't break. It might. Well, look at this. Look at this. There's potatoes everywhere. Everywhere. There's some that are not going to make it. Uh, but look at that. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I've stopped mentioning this, actually. But the... Uh, the best delivery I've had this year is two and a quarter pound uh, and I've stopped mentioning it because it seems as though it's, it's put a jinx on me, I can't beat it, but hey, we're going to weigh these guys, I haven't got them out yet, but I'll tell you what, there looks to be a few of them, yes there does, in this small 10 inch pot, we'll be weighing these guys Molly, yes we will, we'll for you. There's a few small ones. Fetch me that uh, bucket, Paul. Get me that. No, this bucket there. Yeah? Bring it back up. Thank you. Good girl. Thank you. Right, uh, what we're going to do? Right. I'm going to pop these in here for the time being. I'll drop them back out again. And then we can have a better look through this one. Now, this compost. Will be, I'm calling it compost. It's soil really, dirt, but it's had lots of organic matter mixed in with it. It's a piece of wood look. Um, what are we going to do with this now? What would you do with it? What do you do with your compost when you've emptied it out of the pot? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. When my onion bed is empty, which is a couple of months away before we start bothering with onions. Um, I'll store this compost until then 
then this compost will go on top of that onion bed and um, it'll overwinter. It'll overwinter on the onion bed and then we'll use it again next year. Right, let's have a look at this. Whoa, look at that. Out of there. It's a good hole, isn't it? There's at least two pounds there. I'm lucky to beat that two and a quarter with this. Well, taking these indoors, we're going to give them a wash. We're going to weigh them. And there's a couple of small ones. I know they're the pattern. Give you in fact there. Check that one. How's that? Come on, let's go indoors. Whoa! Look at this one. Come on. Okay, I've got to tell you, we're getting excited here to go and grow veg. This looks like two pound plus, uh, and I can't see any in here that I wouldn't want to eat. So it's two pound plus of potatoes. They're going to finish up on the table. Um, right, two and a quarter pound of beef. Blimey! Come on, come on, home grown veg. Two and a quarter pound of beef. Of course, if we manage that, that sets the bar a bit higher again, doesn't it? But anyway, that's how it is. We've got the scales ready. We'll put this big guy up first to impress you. Oh, what size of him? This some of his mates. Before, but not this year uh, and it's been a strange sort of year this year as I've already said I've had pots that have been flooded I've been taking potatoes out of mud and um, we just had so much rain um, and I don't think potatoes like too much rain they like little but not a right okay there we go well are you excited are you excited, Mo? Yeah. Hey, Mo? Mo's excited because she knows there's some small potatoes in here. Aren't you, Mo? You're excited because you know there's some small potatoes in here. Right, let's do it. So, two and a quarter is what we want to be. Where are we at? Get in, get in! I've still got potatoes in the sink. Oh, I'm going to pile them on top. Oh, Molly, Molly. I'm going to make that two and three quarters. We're not going two and five eighths. Five eighths is, well, we're just not, we're not going five eighths. We're going three quarters. Two and three quarter pound of potatoes from a 10 inch pot. That's the record set for this year for me. So I guess the target now, Molly, is three pound, isn't it? Right. Let's see where these small potatoes are for you. Oh. It's a couple of you. Fact is three. I'll give you these three. Hold on, we'll turn this camera now um, and we'll see if we can get your own camera eating these potatoes. Come on. There you go, sweet dad. that nice? Enjoy that. Last one, no more. Girl. Okay, so this is uh, me and Molly, the homegrown veg, signing off. Welcome back. Did you enjoy that? 
Hey, that were two two good deliveries, weren't they? Two good deliveries. I think you could tell from the sound of my voice I was well pleased with those, and I think Molly was pleased that we got a few small mollies for her. So Molly got a treat. We got some potatoes for the for the table. It was a win-win. Just a pity I didn't have Molly with me today. Still, we soldier on. Okay. Did you uh, notice in the first part of this video? You may know this already. You may not. Potato shoot coming out of the top. That's the chit, and all the roots are coming either from the chit or from the base of the chit. There's nothing coming from the bottom of that potato. Nothing. All the action is above the potato once it's planted. So once this potato is planted in this bucket, these roots and these shoots will all be above the potato in the soil mass and all the new potatoes will be above the potato in the soil mass. There'll be nothing below the potato and that's why I like to sit these on just two inches of soil. Right, let me put this to one side a minute. So this is a cut flow water bucket. Four holes drilled in the bottom. One, two, three, four. And if you're a follower of mine you'll have seen this before but that's a 10 inch water bucket. Okay, what we're going to do now is put two inches of garden soil in the bottom of this then sit this potato on it. And this is where the magic happens. Now this soil is plain old garden soil that I've worked on over the years that I've covered with um, a mulch every winter, chopped seaweed and leaves and grass uh, to add organic material to it and each spring I bring it back into service and I usually add some potato fertiliser if I'm growing potatoes or blood fish and bone or grow more anything. Okay so now you're thinking can you do this? Well I'm going to convince you by the end of this video you can do this. Come on. These cut flow water buckets Morrison's were selling these at I think it was 10, a bundle of 10 for 99 pence. Hey come on they're giving them away. Well in fact they are giving them away now. I've had uh, visitors to the site tell me they've been to Morrison's and Morrison's have actually given them these. Um, so just go to a florist, any florist, ask them what do they do with their old cut flower water buckets. Uh, they have a problem getting rid of these in the UK. Apparently black isn't the right colour if that's the word for recycling. So these would go to landfill. So hey, you, you, you'd be doing everybody a favour if you went and got some of these. Okay, and then there is a video on the channel shows me drilling the holes in the bottom of these because these are very lightweight and they tend to want to split. There's a way I've fathomed out of doing it without splitting them. Just just search it, just look for it on the uh, on my channel, you'll find it. I'll show you how I put holes in the bottom of these buckets. Okay, just a little bit more. Right. Does that look like two inch to you? It looks like two inch to me. Um, and what we'll do is just going to sit this like that. That's all we're going to do. <laughs> That's it planted. Is this no dig gardening? Is this what they call no dig gardening? I'm not going to dig anything. I'm going to use my hands. And when this potato's grown, I'm going to empty it out and harvest them with my hands. I'm not going to do any digging. Come on, this is the way to go, isn't it? Right, I'll just gently cover this um, potato so that we don't break off any of the growth. We don't want to waste what we've already got, do we? By being a bit rough. That's it covered. Now, I don't think I've got enough soil here. Um, to fill this uh, this bucket, but that's my intention to top this bucket right off. 
put it outside, forget about it until these shoots start coming through the soil and then I'll start watering it. Unless it's an extended dry period, and I mean seriously dry, and then I would possibly add water um, before I could see the shoots. But if it's our normal spring summer here in the UK, we'll get some showers of rain and that'll be enough until this. Oh, hey, look at this guy. <laughs> you see him? Tell you now, you can tell when soil's healthy when it's got worms in it. Soil's healthy when it's got worms in it. If it doesn't have worms in it, the worms have skidaddled. Why have they skidaddled? Because the soil isn't healthy. You want worms in your soil. You do. Um, and yeah, one other thing about soil. Um, what do farmers grow in? What do the professionals grow in? They grow in soil, don't they? And if the soil isn't very good soil, they improve it. We can do that. You know, there's no need for us going to dig peat bogs up and, and using peat all the time. Farmers don't. So we shouldn't eat, do, should we? No, of course we shouldn't. Okay, right. I didn't think there would be enough soil in there. Anyway, I've got some soil outdoors in the barrow. Uh, the reason I've done this in the greenhouse uh, today is because it's quite windy out there and it would just make a, a lot of background noise on the camera. So hey, that's it. <laughs> that's it. The secret. Two inches in the bottom, sit it on, top it off, take it out. Wait till you see some green shoots, water it. Four months later, bish bash bosh. You're washing potatoes in your sink, you're weighing them, and you're eating them for your Sunday lunch. Come on, you've, you've got to give this a go. You know you have. You've got to give this a go. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. This is Homegrown Veg, signing out.